Oh boy, I take it this is a lion with blood all over it. First, I thought it was water. I'm not gonna lie to you, but now after reading these captions, yeah, this is this is definitely blood. I ain't gonna read these captions out loud because there's some words in here I don't want YouTube to ding me for. But regardless, what's good? How you day? Good morning, evening, night. Whenever you're watching this video, I'm about to check out When Man Becomes Prey by Casual Geographic. Yo, I ain't gonna talk your ears off. I'm gonna go and get to the video. I'm gonna check out the original video. Link will be in the description below. But let's go. The following video contains graphic descriptions of some of the most brutal animal attacks in human history. Viewer discretion and a fresh change of clothes are strongly advised. Oh, and happy Halloween. The African wilderness houses some of the most dangerous wildlife found on Earth. But what happens when one of its most feared predators starts hunting humans? In 1898, the British government decided to build a railway spanning from a port in Mombasa to Lake Victoria. The project was nicknamed the Lunatic Express, since many saw it as a massive waste of time and resources, along with being unnecessarily dangerous. So dangerous that most African natives refused to be involved in construction. So the British imported thousands of laborers from India to work on the bridge. These workers are both unfamiliar they with the African brush, along with all the lethal animals. Go in. back, what the hell? Hold up. Construction. So the British imported thousands of laborers from India to work on the bridge. These workers are both unfamiliar with the African brush, along with all the lethal animals in it. It wouldn't be long until several workers would go missing, but at first the British government brushed them off as deserters. But as the number of missing men grew Damn. larger, soon the horrific truth would come out. A pair of maneless male Damn. lions had been attacking the unsuspecting workers and eating them. Lions don't typically view humans as viable prey, and adult lions are actually naturally wary of humans. But lions are also incredibly adaptable, and these lions were hunting the workers like they were gazelle. While the men were working on the bridge during the day, the two lions were nowhere to be seen. It wasn't until they turned into their campsites for the night that the lions showed up. These lions would slip into the campsites undetected and drag helpless workers out of their tents to their death. Ain't no way this be a boy. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a video, though. I was not about to show that shit. Boy. Drag helpless workers out of their tents to their death. I take it's like a reenactment. In one gruesome attack, one of the lions had grabbed a well-respected and powerful sick worker and ragdolled him out of his tent while the other workers could only listen to his bone-chilling screams of agony. The next day, his fellow workers oh, found him, and from the position no. he was sitting in, it appeared as though he had survived. But as the men drew closer, they realized not only was he completely lifeless, but the lions had licked the skin completely off his cheeks, which formed a grisly smile. The men tried building thorn fences called bomas to keep the lions out. Unfortunately, nobody told the men that lions can leap well over 10 feet and easily clear a boma. And as the attacks and the missing men piled up, the lions started getting more confident. At first, weeks would go by between attacks, but soon, fatal maulings would happen almost daily. And while early on, only Yo, one of the rogue males would enter the campsite at a time, up. soon they'd start at first, weeks would go by between attacks, but soon, fatal maulings would happen almost daily. And while early on, only one of the rogue males would enter the campsite at a time, soon they'd start slaughtering workers together. In one chilling incident, they had moved the site of a hospital which the lions had began targeting. They moved the hospital over a mile away and set up the new hospital as a trap for the lions. Only a day later, the lions found the new hospital and continued their carnage. The lions even appeared to have plot armor. I mean, but At they don't know about these cats. They probably think like, all right, we just got to get away from this damn area. What the hell, dog? Hospital ...and continued their carnage. The lions even appeared to have plot armor. At one point, they had succeeded in trapping one of the male lions, but when the enraged predator started tearing the trap apart, panicking sepoys opened fire and mm -hmm. missed every shot. One shot managed to spring open the trap door, allowing the lion to slip away. And as the attacks persisted, it appeared as though the lions had gone from killing to eat to just Give kill. me the good, dog. We you don't know just how. <laughs> managed to spring open the trap door, allowing the lion to slip away. And as the attacks persisted, it appeared as though the lions had gone from killing to eat to just killing. We don't know just how many lives were hey, taken, hell but according man. to Lieutenant John Patterson, up to 135 men were lost by the time the construction and the line. How they gonna be mad? No, bro, we... No, actually, because... I'm gonna have to close this window real quick. My bad, I had to close my damn window. I can't get a damn word out. It was too much stuff going on. But either way, it got off. All right, so basically, me and my phone. 
So when they built this, well, when they began to build build this lunatic bridge, well, no, it was actually called the lunatic bridge, where a lun lunatic something, my bad, I forgot, whatever. Did it run through the territory? I'm gonna go back and watch. I'm gonna edit out real quick. But if that's the case, though, I mean, shit, just like you don't know about them, they don't know about you. Even though they do not know, I go lie. I can't help but to feel like it was a setup on India. Like, dog, <laughs> dog, <laughs> to like eat, dog come to just it. kill it. We don't know just how many lives were taken, but according to Lieutenant John Patterson, up to 135 men were lost by the time the construction and the lines were finished. And we don't know for sure what Even led these lines to go on a human hunting spree. One of the lions was found to have an abscess in his teeth causing a painful infection that may have been too debilitating to hunt his usual prey, forcing him to seek out easier targets. One theory is that in the past, Arab slave trade Humans. caravans would run through Savo, and men that would have made no money on the market, like the old, injured, sick, or dying, would just be tossed down into the brush. It's possible that these lions of Savo were fed by these crimes against humanity and learned that humans as a food option is never completely off the table. Whew. Don't get me wrong now, yo, I saw I saw many videos of people over in Africa who would just go and hunt these malls, like legit. I hate to sound so stereotypical, but something just like a spear or something. I was like, what the fuck? Humans as a food option is like, never no, you come off here, the nigga. table. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this nigga coming, cook. Come. And that's crazy how we're all just different depending on our environment, dog. Even though we're humans, like we should all be the same, equal, right? You would think. Nah, oh, some people just do a little more powerful shit. All right, let's just get back to the video, dog. Never completely off the table. In July 1945, a U.S. Navy heavy cruiser delivered uranium to the island of Tinian for what would end up being the world's first nuclear weapon Hiroshima. war, which would be dropped in Hiroshima, Japan. Japan would get its revenge when a torpedo struck the USS Indianapolis as it was en route to the Philippines. In only 12 minutes, the imposing military cruiser was underwater, along with anyone unlucky enough to escape in time. Although, considering what would happen, maybe they were the lucky ones. Because as the stranded crew floated adrift in the Philippine Gulf, they quickly realized they had a major problem. Sharks, likely oceanic white tips, were stalking the hapless sailors. At first, the sharks simply cleaned up the casualties, feeding on the bodies of the deceased. But soon, they turned their attention to the survivors. As much as the sailors tried to float together, invariably, someone would drift away from the group. And that's when the patient sharks would move in. According to survivors, the men would thrash around and scream hysterically before being pulled under. And only a short while later, a life jacket would resurface and nothing else. And as the dehydration, intense exposure, and saltwater poisoning Ooh. took its toll, some men would hallucinate that they were being rescued yep. and would swim away from the group towards a ship that wasn't there, not realizing they were paddling towards their own death. Even worse, some of the men would become delirious and start attacking their fellow shipmates, forcing them to literally cast them off towards the sharks. Man. This living nightmare lasted five days, and when salvation finally came, only 317 out of the 1,196 men could be accounted for. But the psychological torture didn't end there for some of them. Captain Charles B. McVeigh would become the first captain to ever be court-martialed for losing his ship, and the reasoning was because he didn't zigzag. Even Commander Hashimoto, the guy that sunk his ship, testified that there was nothing McVeigh could have done, but it didn't matter. America had its scapegoat, and it was him. McVeigh regularly received hate mail and threats of violence from the family of the fallen. In 2000, he would be exonerated and found to have committed no wrongdoing, but not before the harassment and crippling Funny, survivor's guilt story would too. break him. On November 6th, the fallen. In 2000, he would be exonerated and found to have committed no wrongdoing, but not before the harassment and crippling survivor's guilt would break him. On November 6th, 1968, the captain that had survived war, man-eating sharks, and dehydration took his own life while holding a toy sailor he had been given as a boy for good luck. The true monsters of this story weren't the sharks. The most dangerous bear in the world isn't the grizzly bear or even the polar bear. I but thought it's it was widely the considered to be the sloth bear. Because where adult grizzlies and polar bears have no natural predators, sloth bears regularly run fades with tigers and leopards. That generational trauma means you have an animal that has all the tools of a predator, but the mindset of prey. And that makes them terrifyingly Ooh. unpredictable. The fact that habitat loss and encroachment causes them to come into constant contact with humans only makes it 10 times worse. 
The sloth bear of Mysore was infamous for unaliving 12 people and severely injuring another 24. Armed with wolverine claws and a devastating bite, sloth bears have a nasty habit of attacking the faces of their victims. Damn! Those that survived often lost an eye or a nose or had a chunk of I their cheek never heard off. Of these. Those that didn't survive often had their faces torn off completely, and in some cases the bear ate the bodies of its victims. A far cry from the insects and fruits is Baloo of the jungle usually Man, man, you just jogging through that bitch. Oh, shit. No, for real, though, stop playing, though. I ain't never in my life heard of no damn sloth bear, dog. That mother look creepy. Because I thought it was like a little baby bear or something at first, and I always thought it was a damn grizzly. I always hate how you be hearing ish, like, when you're like, the uh, number one XYZ is this. I swear, the number one killer for humans change, like, every week. Survive often had their faces torn off completely, and in some cases, the bear ate the bodies of its victims. A far cry from the insects and fruits is Baloo of the jungle usually eats. Other bodies recovered had hands missing, like in some pig. cases, their entire chest cavity ripped open. Some described the horrific injuries as being the work of an animal with the intent, but not necessarily the knowledge to kill. Kenneth Anderson had attempted to hunt the bear, while also saving a man who had been mauled to the point of sheer incapacitation. As Anderson tried carrying the man to safety, it got dark fast, which was probably why he didn't see the rock that tripped him and caused him to break his ankle. The immobilized Anderson survived Damn. the night, but the man he tried to save didn't. Anderson would be the one to put the murderous bear out of commission, but we still don't know what made this usually termite-eating bear go full Jeff Dahmer. Maybe it was revenge for a previous attack or a lost cub. Maybe everyone has a limit, and that bear hit his. Damn, like a dog from the front. Hey, what the hell is this? And you know what it was making me think of? Not even being the funny. Next I was man, if you watch, if you watch South Park, was man bear pig based off of this damn thing some kind of way? I don't know. It's, it's like every angle, it looked like something different. The next story takes place on Ramri Island off the coast of Myanmar, which borders China, Bangladesh, and India. In 1945, the British pulled up with the intention of establishing a new air base, but first had to contend with the Japanese Imperial Army, which had already captured the island. The British flanked the Japanese, who, rather than surrender, opted to try to escape by cutting through miles of dense, boggy, uncharted mangroves. As they did, the British circled the mangrove swamp, essentially stranding the men to unforgiving terrain. Venomous snakes, spiders, and disease-carrying mosquitoes were almost an afterthought after the men realized they had waded directly into saltwater crocodile territory. The details of what happened next have been debated so for many years. movies play off of this water crocodile oh, shit, territory. so many movies play off of that uh, same scene too when those soldiers be walking through the water and just be slicing through the trees and shit. Like man, we funny we just watched this uh, story as well too though, but this is just history at this point though, dog. If you know it, you know if you don't, then pay attention to school or it, I don't know. Shit. Right. Venomous snakes, spiders, and disease-carrying mosquitoes were almost an afterthought after the men realized they had waded directly into saltwater crocodile territory. The details of what happened next have been debated for years. Many say that the up to 20 foot long crocs converged on the defenseless soldiers, first picking off the ones that had already passed tents before moving on to the struggling and infirm. One British soldier described hearing three distinct sounds, the incessant firing of rifles overhead, the erratic splashing of excited yeah, crocodiles, choose. and the <sighs> blood curdling cries of the men being dismembered and devoured alive. According to him, Woo. the sounds were deafening. Some men sought to take cover in the trees only a couple feet above the marauding reptiles when they made a horrific discovery. Crocs can easily launch themselves several oh, feet in. The sounds were deafening. Just look at that Some shit. men sought to take cover in the trees only a couple feet above the marauding reptiles when they made a horrific discovery. Crocs can easily launch themselves several feet out of the water, and Damn. the men that hadn't climbed high enough were caught in those snare trap jaws and torn to shreds. Another chilling realization was the intelligence of the cold blooded predator. According to multiple sources, the crocs would use their tails as battering ramps to slam against the base of the trees, hoping to knock loose a prize like mm. a twisted human pinata. Like African crocodiles what? camping in rivers during great migrations, these crocodiles seem perfectly content to bide their time. We have no way of knowing exactly how many lives were lost on that island, but we do know it was very likely in the several hundreds. We also have no way to confirm just how many were taken by the crocodiles and how many simply flatlined. This looks so intimidating. I'm not gonna lie to you, dog. We already watched the story. We already know about the story. Definitely rest in peace. I'm just off topic right now. Just speaking of just crocodiles, alligators in general. It's just how it, they look so close to a dinosaur, dog. At least from what history, the history books have taught us dinosaurs look like. 
But we ain't gonna get into shit like that. It legit looks like it legit looks like power, like intimidating as shit, man. I remember I was in Texas. I'm gonna make it quick. I already told y'all story a hell of time. So I, I was going to get Street Fighter. I think it was four or five. Regardless, I was driving at night, man. I was driving down a road, whatever. And I can see on my, you know, on the left side where posing traffic is, ongoing traffic is, whatever. Coming coming your way, you can see the lights. So I can see people like flashing lights and shit. And I'm just driving and driving, and you hear horns going. Hah! I'm just driving. I get closer and closer, and I'm like, "Damn, nigga, did a tree fall?" And like a whole tree was in the street, dog. And keep in mind, it was at night and it was raining like crazy. But as I got closer and closer, to slow down. They were, they were trying to inform me, let me know, to like, to stop, bro. So as I was going, I started slowing down. I was like, "Oh shit, I don't know the difference between alligator, crocodile, all that shit, dog." But it was this nigga. It was him. It was. But no, but no, I was went in the street and it was huge as shit. And I was just looking. And I was legit just wondering, like, yo, what would happen if I would have hit it? Like, would it legit would it just puncture my tires? Would it like after my car or something? Would it actually hurt it? I don't know. But as I was just sitting there looking, and I was like, yo, this is crazy. Cause you could you could feel the energy. Like I was just sitting there looking like, yeah, this is like if I got this car, dog gonna beat the brakes off my ass. And then when they do the uh what is the death the death row? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shit, man. We also have All no right, way to confirm to just how many oh, were gosh. taken by the crocodiles and how many simply flatlined to dehydration, sickness, other wildlife, or simply casualties of war. However, this is widely considered to be the most lethal crocodile attack in human history. And since saltwater crocodiles are capable of living 70 plus years, the chances that at least one of those same crocodiles are still there are low, but they're not but, zero. Damn, that's crazy to think about, dude. Crocodiles are one of the- My bad, I know you probably like, yo, this nigga stop it all the time. Hey, peep though, this is my video, stop playing. But for real though, I legit, I'm gonna make it quick. I legit be thinking about that, I wonder how much ish animals have seen come and go throughout the time they've been here. Like, not even being funny, freaking uh, cockroaches, cause they say shit, they've been here forever. I legit be wondering how much stuff have they seen just come and go, come and go, like how much do they share in between them where it was like, yeah, you, mean, you remember in the year 200? When them humans, blah, blah. Or we wasn't even here when it, when they came. I don't know some shit. Like, I, yeah, ever since they came, I hated them niggas. Legit, not being funny. I wonder so much ish about the past, man, because that's where all the damn answers are. Everybody want to go to the future so quick, boy. I want to go, man. I just want to see how shit was. In the year 102. Crocodiles are one of the most stubbornly resilient things on Earth. They've been around for about 200 million years and have barely changed. And with a wide ranging diet and few if any natural predators, crocs can live virtually anywhere there's warmth and water. So it makes sense that one of the most infamous animal serial killers of all time was a crocodile. Gustav was an 18 foot reptilian Ted Bundy rumored to have been responsible for up to 300 names missing from the census. According to legend, the massive Nile predator was too bulky to hunt the typical fish, antelope, and zebra leading him to go after bigger, tougher game like hippos, buffalo, and even humans. The Burundi butcher would allegedly hunt anything that came into its line of sight without <clears throat> prejudice. And like all crocs, his favorite method of hunting would have likely been lying in wait in the water before exploding and unleashing a 3,000 pound bite force to crush whatever was unlucky enough to get caught in its jaws, before using the infamous death roll to shred their victim mm. into bite sized chunks. It's likely most human casualties were adults collecting water and children playing in the shallow end, not realizing the disturbance was basically ringing the dinner bell. Gustav was also disturbingly indestructible, with several eyewitnesses describing what they swore were bullet wounds tattooed across its armored skin. But the eeriest part was that for a monster nearly the length of a Damn, bus, I ain't gonna lie, the way their eyes be opening, that shit be so fucking fire to me, dog. And the way they just keep it like just above water, just be, oh my gosh. They don't even be looking at you neither, but you know damn well. They notice your ass when uh, when I stayed in Texas, one more story, bro. I told, I should have changed the name to channel Uncle Charlie because I got stories for everything. My bad, dog. Look, peep, though. One day I'm up in Texas, dog. Uh, I want to say Mo City, whatever, right? Air, Pokemon Go was like hot. It's this park that was real popular. Everybody go. You go down, you go down Highway Six. I don't know where you live, or whatever. You go down Highway Six. It's in a good part too. I want to say Fort Bend and shit. You go down Highway Six. It was this park. You go into this. It's, it's these two bridges on each side. You can cross. But as you're crossing, the bridges are kind of old and raggedy a little bit. But you can see gators down there, and they just be just sitting. There. Like I wish a nigga would fall down here. They got my hand. Not playing, not being funny. Stop playing so damn much, dog. Go back, man. Look at this shit. Right from we Hey, for real though, at the end I'm gonna tell you the story about when I beat man. I wrestled the hell out of this alligator. <laughs> Stop playing. I had to be uncle a little bit, dog. Hey, nigga, shut your life. Every time this nigga come out here, he be lying, cut. Nigga, on my mama, ask your sister. <laughs> you little bitch ass. <laughs> I 
nigga. Man, dog, if you ain't never had conversations like that with your uncle, dog, mm -hmm. who you missed out? An eye patch, your uncle. Like, stop playing. Let's back to the video, man. Most human casualties were adults collecting water <laughs> and sad. children playing in the shallow end, not realizing the disturbance was basically ringing the dinner bell. Gustav was also disturbingly Man. indestructible, with several eyewitnesses describing what they swore were bullet wounds tattooed across its armored skin. But the eeriest part was that for a monster nearly the length of a bus, Gustav was unexplainably never caught. In one attempt, like researchers thrill. placed a live goat in a cage as bait to lure the beast out. After a storm, the next morning the cage was empty, but Gustav was nowhere to be found. We don't know how old he is, how long he had been hunting humans, just how many people had been lost to him, or even if he's still alive. There were some reports of Gustav having been shot by a hunter in 2019, but with no photographic evidence, there's still a chance that he's out there prowling the rivers of Burundi. The way I see it, there's only three possible options. One, he's dead. Two, he's still out there serving as unethical population control. Or three, he has NordVPN. Because NordVPN creates an Man, encrypted tunnel for you and your data and protects your identity by hiding your IP address, allowing you to go off the grid untrackable and untraceable just like Gustav. <laughs> like Fox, so you can be found almost anywhere. NordVPN gives you the option to do the option to connect to thousands of different servers across countries no. all over. If you want to enjoy the perks of Australian entertainment without also enjoy entertaining the wildlife, Australian servers are just a click away. And unlike the allegedly 2,000 pound Gustav, with fast, reliable servers, you never have to feel like you sold getting back. In 2003, locals in Malawi were so terrified of one animal that it drove 4,000 of them to completely abandon their villages to seek refuge. The marauding beast had mauled three people into chalk outlines and severely disfigured another 16. Those that survived were essentially crippled for life, with some missing both hands and legs, with others missing eyes and ears. In one gruesome attack, a woman had gotten her jaw completely detached. The mysterious assailant was so feared and avoided capture for so long that some believed that the attacks were the work of a supernatural creature. In truth, these people were being stalked and hunted by a rabid hyena. Although they're armed with arguably the most devastating bite of any land mammal, hyenas are actually wary of humans. But as many will tell you, anything that gets rabies quickly becomes a different kind of animal. Especially when that animal has jaws strong enough to amputate an elephant. The rabid hyena terrorized the people of Malawi for weeks, but whether the actual animal responsible for the maimings was caught and killed was never confirmed. The most infamous animal mass murderer of all time lived in Nepal and the Kamauan district of India. The Bengal tiger of Champawat was believed to be responsible for 436 less people on earth. According to research, the carnage started in Nepal, but when hunters were called in, the tiger successfully evaded all of them. Eventually, she was driven out of the area and swam across a river and invaded India, where the attacks only got worse. The homicidal big cat Damn. would typically target young women and children and would often travel up to 20 miles following the kill, making it that much harder to capture her. And unlike most tigers, who typically hunt during dusk or dawn, the man-eater at Champawat almost exclusively caught bodies during broad daylight. She, she became so reviled fuck. that locals no longer referred to her as a cat, but as the devil Step of up. India. Oh. Nigga! Damn, imagine legit hearing that for real. Like, that legit became people's reality. That's fucked up. Broad daylight. She became so reviled that locals no longer referred to her as a cat, but as the devil of India. Damn, rest in peace. Tigers reverberating Damn, roar. I ain't never. Is that legit realistic? Like the in between, like the inhale sound, like inhale, exhale. If that what that was, I ain't never in my life heard it. Heard it presented to me that way. So reviled that locals no longer referred to her as a cat, but as the devil of India. Tigers reverberating roar paralyzed oh, entire shit. villages, with grown men refusing to leave their huts to go to work, Hell no, I'm lest going. a rampaging predator turn them into a statistic. It was believed that the, the tigers. Thing is, let me not use my privilege here. 
Yeah, it's easy for me to say that because I know I can sit my ass on the computer and do some shit, make some money. But damn, they legit had to really had to make that life or death decision. Like, yo, I got to go to work because more than likely I got a family to do for it. Like, hey, I know it's a bullshit situ situation, but life does not fucking stop for nobody, dog. Or I can sit here and keep my life, but slowly lose my life. I don't know. This is that is man. Get the lest a rampaging predator turn them into a statistic. It was believed that the tigress had been shot by an especially cruel hunter, which broke several of her canine teeth, leaving her mortally wounded. It's likely that this injury, along with the fact that tigers are one of the few animals that'll actively seek revenge, that drove the tiger to eventually start seeking out easier prey, people. And as a highly intelligent predator, she was constantly adapting and able to consistently avoid capture. When she was finally taken down, it was clear from the nasty injuries the tiger had sustained that she was not the villain of this story. That doesn't change the fact that she went out as the most prolific man murker in nature. And if you think you're safe because you don't live in Asia, just keep in mind that there are more tigers in the United States. You know what's funny? <laughs> So as I was watching the video, right, I'm like, in my head, selfishly, look, I'm sorry. I'll, I'm out in my head, I'm like, thank God I ain't that boy, you can't stop your truth of thoughts, nigga. I was like, thank God I ain't in that motherfucker. But I was, and so I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, I ain't got to worry about seeing that. But the whole time, you can play if you want. You can go outside and bump into them one, one of them most. Hey, it's been so, especially in Michigan, dog, it's been buku cool stories I've been hearing about, like random wildcats just out and about, whatever, dog. Woo! Look up and see that shit. And then the rest of the world combined. Hey, luckily that's the end, cause damn, my camera about to die anyway. They more run, well running hot anyway, dog. This one was freaking crazy, man. Woo, shit. But look, though, if I did something to y'all some ish at the end, I'ma have to tell you another video, cause I'm looking at my camera right now and showing this orange and running hot. Gotta get, my, gotta get my dummy battery. Oh yeah, it's all about the time your uncle uh rustled that uh crocodile. I'ma tell you, I'ma tell you next video. I right, ain't gonna forget, yo. Next video just remind me. I'm gonna right, grab that nigga. Right, shut the fuck up, cuz. Shut the fuck up. Then that nigga started to get me. He started to get me a little bit. I right, nigga.